So we make our beginning in the name of God, the Father who created us, Jesus, His Son, who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who sustains and sanctifies us. Amen. Amen. So we acknowledge that we are God's children and that we err, that we make mistakes, so we ask gracious God to have mercy on us. All of us, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent in your compassion Forgive us, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of heart through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Lord. Amen. And God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
Let us continue to pray. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light that we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Josephine is going to be read. Please be seated. The first reading from Amos chapter 5. Verses 18 to 24. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Psalm 70. The refrain, you are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confound you. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. The refrain. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord, do not tarry. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let those who seek you for joy and be glad in you, let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord, but as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry the refrain. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry the word of the Lord. Josephine. 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 Read the second reading. <laughs> okay. The second, the second reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. And for this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, will, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them and meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to Lord. you, O oh Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bride. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil in their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look! Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and drink their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will be there will not be no for you and for us. You have better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord. Open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep away, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. My brothers and sisters, the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Knock, knock. It is you. Knock, knock. It is you. Knock, knock. It is you. Let's see now. You know, there is a story. I begin like that because there is a story about these men coming to knock at this door. And every time he knocked at the beginning, he said, the voice behind the door, who is there? It is me. The door never opened. Then he came back the next night and he knocked on the door and he said, who is there? It is we. The door didn't open. And then the third time he came back and knocked again and said, Who? Who is it at the door? Oh, it is you. And the door opened. A particular look. One that is informed by this. Consciousness, a consciousness that always binds him to the heart, to the very life of who God is. You see, Jesus doesn't he see himself separated from God. And this inner consciousness acts as a leaven that rises in him and makes him do what he does. And this is the inner consciousness that God is offering to us. So that's why, knock, knock. Who's there? It's you. When Christ sees your face 
And Christ himself will see his face on your face. Then the door will open for us. Then the river of life will flow through us. This is it. And the parable today, it's about that. More than anything, it's about hindering that. Our inability to let those streams of running water flow, roll down. You know, there is this false perception and it is very widespread in Christianity. Oh, waiting for the second coming. You know, and there is another more relevant perspective that the second coming is here. Jubilee is here as we pray at the end. And the second coming is here because it is you who is the second coming. It is us. <clears throat> there is a famous essay by the preacher that changed the civil rights movement that led the civil rights movement. And it was, it is entitled, The Midnight Knock. I am not going to say anything about it. I want you just to Google it, look it up to what it says. Because I think the clock for us is ticking. And we are over past the midnight point. And we need to really figure out whose face we are going to show. Whose look we are going to take on. You see, Jesus is very specific about that look. He over and over sees a person and he doesn't see a problem or an enemy. All those labels that we attach people, we reduce people to. Jesus has this vision that sees holistically who the person is and seeing that he is able to respond, to engage that person. You see, we limit ourselves when we begin to see people as a problem. More so when we begin to see people as enemies. And even more so when we see people as somebody different than us. When you know what unites us? It's our humanity. That the person that we see in front of us, next to us, also bleeds, just like we do. Struggles just as we do. You see, that inner consciousness of Jesus informs his way of engagement. <laughs> And I want to give you just two main characteristics of how Jesus engages. And this is taken from, now I blank out the author, uh, The Seven Habits of Successful Living, Stephen Cole, something? He was in the bestsellers a few years back. But I remember, basically, he said, 
The first characteristic is you begin at the end. Begin at the end. Where are you heading? In whatever you do, what are you tr trying to accomplish? Begin there. Keep that in mind. You know, if we as a church, we want to be a community church, a welcoming church, what do we do to accomplish that? We begin at the end. So if we have lacks around and don't let people in, and we want the community in, so we begin by saying, wait a minute. If our end in sight is to welcome people, why do we keep the doors closed? And if we want to be a community church, are we in the community? How engaged are we with the community? How relevant are we you begin at the end? That's the first. As we prepare, as we seed our minds with the look of Jesus, the inner consciousness of Jesus, that projects that evokes, that provokes specific actions. So the first one, what is the first one? Begin at the end. Begin at the end. The second one, first things first. What's a priority in your life? You know, we often say, oh, it's our families. I always say, you know, my parents don't live too far away. You know how many times I visit them? <laughs> Every day. No. Every week once I a week. Wish, I once wish, I wish, even one week. week. But, you see, this is the inconsistency for us. If that is a first thing. So we make the time for that. How many of us say, you know, the most valuable thing for us is family. Do we spend time with those that we love? If that's a first thing, great. You know, but is that if our church says people are the first thing that has a lot to do with how we keep the building here do we welcome you know if people feel welcome into this space and that is part of our work as a church to keep things first. And you see, Jesus had that particular way of seeing. He never forgot. That inner consciousness was always pushing him to act in a very particular way. He knew that God, his father, had favorites. <clears throat> and we should be in good company. Because Jesus knew that it was the broken hearted, the sinners, 
those who need him those who need who need who need his compassion his, and that's what he did he stake his whole life on that to the point of giving his life on the cross for us so two marks of disciples to keep our lamps well oiled to keep our eyes on the prize begin at the end first things first then I told Angela Keep it short, so I'll keep it short. Okay.
for one being of the Father. Through him all things were made for Christ and for our salvation. We give God in heaven with the heart of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and came to the human. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He was suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with his scriptures. He has ascended to heaven. He will come again in glory to the We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped in the Lord of God, who has spoken in the promises. We believe in one who we have in the Holy Spirit. We are God. We will look for the resurrection of heaven and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for peace and we give gestures of that peace to one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts. And prepare with joy for the Paschal feast that renews the gift of baptism. We may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread in his hands, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. At the end of the meal, he took the cup. Again, he gave the thanks and praise, gave it all for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, so that forgiveness may be a reality, may be yours. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And in that spirit, a spirit that has been awakened in us, given to us, my God, we learn to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
and the fellowship of all your saints as living signs that your great day has come and jubilee is now. Amen. Let us pray for God's blessing. As you go forth from this place, may the wind of the Spirit startle your senses and blow through your life. May the fire of the Spirit scourge your complacency and light your way. And may the blessing of the Holy One, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer rest with you now and